Okay, this tutorial is just going to take us through the main functions of this toolbar. So we're on our page in the content management system. So we can see the image and the title and the two paragraphs of text that we have. And we're going to make use of this toolbar. If you can only see one of the rows of the toolbar, then click on this icon at the end, show, hide, kitchen sink. And as you can see, when you click on that, it will hide or show all of the icons. Some of the icons are fairly self-explanatory. So the bold and italic and strike through icons do what you'd expect if you're familiar with Word. If you highlight some text by clicking and dragging, you can make that text bold. If you click and drag across some text, you can make it italic. If you click and drag across some text, you can put a strike through through it. So we have bold, italic, and strike through text. We'll quickly preview that by clicking on Preview Changes. This update cannot be seen by your visitors yet because you haven't committed to it. We're just previewing your changes. And you can see you've got bold, italic, and strike through text. So we'll close that preview. Now quite a useful button which we're just going to jump ahead to slightly is the undo button and the undo button is this curly arrow the last thing we did was the strike through so if we undo that and before that the italic we changed this area to italic we can undo the last change and the change before that was making this text bold so if we click undo we will remove the bold and we're back to where we started. If we decide we did like the bold, we could redo the last change. These two items provide you a way of placing bullet points on the pages. The first one is an unordered list, so it's just uh, either small circles or small squares normally whereas the ordered list would be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. So if we want to put a bullet list, say between these two paragraphs, we would select the end of this paragraph, we we'll press the enter key, and this select the order list, so it would be numbered, but the other list is an unnumbered list, so we're going to check ordered list. This is our first item in the order list. And when we press enter it automatically increases two and three and that's it. So again we could quickly preview those changes and we can see our ordered bullet point list and we'll close that preview and the, this icon allows you to use a predefined italic style for quotes so if we go right to the end of our page hit enter and we click on the quote icon we could maybe put in uh, I'm just going to copy this. We could just maybe paste or put in some, type in some text so that when we preview that, this block quote area looks like a quote. So it's a serif font and it's in italics. Let's just close that preview. These three icons are probably fairly familiar if you use Word as well. Most paragraphs would be justified to the left margin, which is the default. So if I click on this, align left, it's going to already be aligned to the left margin. If I click align right, you can see it's justifying to the right margin. And if I push the middle one, it aligns the text in the center. It's not aligned to the left margin or the right margin. 
I think we just want it as the default on the left margin so I can just click that align center to unselect it and we're back to our preferred option. The next two icons allow you to insert a link and to remove a link. So we're going to insert a link and let's just say we want to insert a link on these three words so we click and highlight those words by dragging and when they're highlighted we click on the insert edit link icon and as you can see you can enter your URL for the link and if you wish the link to open in a new window or tab click on the checkbox so we're going to add that link and you can see that it's gone blue indicates that that's a link we'll preview those changes and there we have it we have a link within the text paragraph so if we click on it it's going to open the new page where we link to and then we have internet plus home page so we'll close that window and we'll close the preview we might want to link to a page already on our own site let's just say these three words so we'll click and drag we're going to add a link and in this case it says all link to existing content all we have to do is click on that if we've got a lot of pages we can search for the page or we could link to a page in this case we're just going to link to the same page and it puts the page in the URL and it gives you a title. The title is the text that you see when you put a mouse over a link. You can of course change that and because it's a page on your website you probably don't want it to open in a new window and you just add the link and again if someone clicked on that link it would take them to the page in your website. Uh, this icon uh, inserts a more tag which is relevant for posts and we'll deal with that under our posts video. This icon allows you to check the spelling of a page. If you click the little drop down to the right you can select which language you want to spell check in and then when you click on the ABC tick icon it will spell check your page. This icon toggles full screen editing mode. Uh, it's kind of useful if you've got a very long page, a lot of content, and you, rather than scrolling up and down in this box, it's easier to see the whole page within the view screen, but without the menus on the sidebars and these other publish and page attributes on the right hand side. So if we click on that, we see that we get a a full screen preview and we're able to click and edit in the same way. I'm going to exit from full screen. Uh, you might find that that's useful if you've got a lot of content on the page and you need to make quite a lot of quick changes over a tool page. We've already discussed the show hide kitchen sink that hides and shows the second line of the menu icons. This drop down has a few options that are useful generally. You have paragraph and you have heading tags. And this first line is actually, because I've highlighted it, you can see it's heading one. The first heading on the page would normally be heading one. Heading one may have two, three, four subheadings. They will be heading two and so on. So heading twos may have two or three or four or more subheadings, they would be heading three. So if we wanted to put heading two, if we already have a heading one, maybe we need a subheading to it for these bullet points. So we'll place the cursor at the end of the paragraph and hit enter and we're now in position to put the second title. We've typed the title, click and drag over the title, and in this case we're going to select Heading 2, and there it is. So if we preview those changes, you can see we've got the Heading 1 and the Heading 2 now.
So let's close that preview. I think probably this icon here, underline, is self explanatory. There we are, we've underlined the text that we selected. This next item would align the text full width across the page. So let's go to uh, maybe this paragraph and highlight it by clicking and dragging. And we'll select align full. And you can see this one, this icon has a line to the left and the right of the margins of the page of the content. In some instances, this may mean that you get quite big gaps in some of the words, depending on the length and frequency of those words. So if you've only got a few words, a varying length within a, within a, a, a line, then you may get big gaps in that. Normally, I would deselect that and leave paragraphs left aligned. This next icon I would dissuade you from using. Normally the style of a page, uh, any page on your website, is defined by a piece of code called a style sheet. If you were to select some text and use this select text color icon, you get a drop down, you could make the text orange, and if we previewed that you'd see the orange text. It's quite unusual to need to do that. Obviously you should be careful not to select a text color that is similar to your link color because that's quite confusing for your visitors. And normally uh, you wouldn't select a text color unless it was already present in the style sheet. So I'm going to undo that change. These next two buttons one allows you to paste text from uh, a text editor such as Notepad and the second one allows you to paste straight from Word and the reason really why you would need specifically to paste from Word using this icon is that Word will generally transfer over quite a lot of background code that you don't need you certainly don't need the background code for the web. It will bloat your code. Uh, it will make the code difficult to read and it may make it difficult for search engines to read as well. So it's quite important that you use the paste as plain text or the paste from Word icons when you paste some text from Word, for example. And it's quite straightforward. You click on paste from Word and in this box you'll paste the text that you brought over from Word, click the insert button and the background coding brought across from Word should be removed. This, this little rubber icon, it's like an eraser, it removes any formatting from the text that you select. So uh, if you've got some bold text for example within this paragraph and you select the paragraph and you click on the remove formatting icon you can see it's removed that bolding it's brought it back to some clean text without any formatting and then this icon if you need to insert a special or custom character let's position where we wish to insert the character click insert custom character and you see we have a number of icons that we can use Let's say we want the plus and minus and you'll see we have a plus and minus we'll add a space after that and we can add any number of icons so we could for example enter the euro icon to make a euro price These icons are to indent and outdent paragraphs or items on the page. So for example, if we select that paragraph, at the moment it's fully up next to the left margin, so we can't use this icon yet, but we can indent this page, this paragraph, 
as you see, once, twice, three times. Now that we have indented it, we can remove that indentation by using the outdent icon. We've already touched on the undo and the redo icons. As we see, we could step back, multi-level undo. So every time we click on that, it's removing one of those changes we've done through this tutorial. So it's removing the bullet points there. And it's removing and we're back, we can't go back any further the undo icon is now greyed out we don't have any history to undo, we're right back where we started and the final icon, the help icon you can use that if you want some basic information about how to use the content management system a lot of these icons you can use by clicking or you can use them using shortcut keys which is something maybe some advanced users would want to use to speed up the process once we're happy with any of the changes we've made and we've previewed them we can update that page content by clicking the update button and any of the changes we've made in the page will now go live for your visitors